Good morning and welcome to another session of Church Online. For the next 30 minutes or so, we trust that you will really feel at home with us. To get connected with us, please like our Facebook page or subscribe to our YouTube channel. In this way, you can stay updated with what's happening. We really need your help. Don't you want to please share this message with the world around you? We've heard some amazing testimonies of people sharing it on all platforms, even via WhatsApp sending out the link. So please help us with that. Please help us financially. Please take hands with us and give towards God's kingdom. If you'd like to give to this ministry, please follow the link below to our website and you can find all the details that you need. This morning, we really trust that you will have a good time with us. So take a deep breath, relax, make yourself at home, and we trust that God's word will penetrate and impact your heart. Hey guys, we are so excited to have you with us today. As we are approaching the finish line in our GLOW series and um, I'm super stoked today and I trust that you are as excited um, as I am today as we get to the last letter in the word GLOW. Before we do that, let's just open up in prayer. Father, I just want to thank you for this day. I want to thank you, Lord, for this opportunity for us to come together and sit around your word, Lord God, and to spend time in worship, just praising your holy name. Father, I pray for, for, this, for this day. I pray as we share your word that it will impact people's lives, Lord, and that there really will be a genuine sense of transformation in the name of Jesus Christ. And I just want to give you all the glory, Lord. All the glory belongs to you, to you alone, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Right, so before we step forward, I just want to do a very, very quick review, uh, super quick. And if you've missed any of our past um, services around GLOW, I'd really encourage you to go back and watch and join the series. It's a five-part series. Today is part four. Next week, we're going to marry it all together. Uh, but the first one was G, and that just spoke about God the key importance of having God in your life and the difference between needing God and wanting God. And I want to just um, encourage you to hold on to that one of having the desire to want God and having His fullness in your life. And secondly, we stepped into the element of love. And not just the fuzzy feeling of love that, that we feel from time to time, especially when you just fall in love with somebody, but actually that sustained love, which ultimately is only given to us by the Holy Spirit. So we need to carry the spirit of love. And uh, last week we spoke into the letter O, which is oxygen. And oxygen we all need to breathe. And, and there's something that our spirit man needs to breathe. And that is the ever-present presence of the Holy Spirit. And so we've started to put this puzzle together of what it looks like to glow and what it looks like to really stand out in this world in this time. And so today we're going to stretch you into the final letter. And I would want to risk saying this, that I'm going to stretch you into your future um, and give you the tips on how you can win, how you can get to the end, how you can succeed and finish this race with excellence and finishing it strong. How we can conquer and how we can stand the test of time. And you know what? Yes, you're right. The letter W does stand for win. You know, when I was thinking about this, to be quite honest, in the, in the setting up of the GLOW series... Um, that was one of the first words that came to me was the word win. Set yourself up to win. Um, and what, what really birthed it in my heart was the desire to see people, to see you finish strong. I don't know about you, but I have that desire to finish strong. And um, so today we're going to take you on that journey of what it looks like. Um, to finish strong and to get to the win. And you know what? 
just to just to bring a picture and just to bring this into a bit of perspective i don't know if you ever ran relay at school and i remember in primary school we were all f forced to to run relay and uh, what i love about relay in primary school i must note is that everybody got a chance to take part and 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 there was a licorice all sorts of people we were tall we were short there was skinny there was more blessed children and i was amongst the blessed children at that stage um, but what what i remember so clearly about relay running at school was was there was an incredible crowd cheering you on the whole your team uh would be on on the stands just shouting for every participant who, who grabbed that relay stick and ran and i tell you when you got that stick you ran as if your life depended on it. You ran to win. There was no other motivation. You ran to win. And uh, what I also just take from that is that it's a team sport. And I want to just say this to you in the opening moments of the service today. Your journey in Christ, although you're running your part of the race, is a team sport. For so many of us, we feel that it's something that we just do alone. I really want to encourage you, you're not alone. We are part of a team. And I want to just read you a scripture quickly this morning, and it stands in 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Paul writes and he says this, Don't you realize that in a race everybody runs, but only one person gets the prize? And then he says this next thing, So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that's going to fade away. But we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should do. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified my dear friends i'm sure that none of us have that in our hearts to be disqualified but i pick something out of this scripture that i want you to take into your own heart today 1 corinthians 9 24 so run to win today if you want to fix something in your heart is please don't walk around in your journey with god saying ah let's see if it's going to work out no Go with a goal set before you to win, to finish this race strong. Why am I saying this? And why am I saying it so passionately today? I don't know about you, but I've seen far too many, even friends of mine, fall short of the finish line. People that have totally faded away. People that have even dropped their faith. And that's heart-wrenching. That is, that's really painful. And, you know, my heart bleeds when I see people walking away from a journey in Christ, walking away from a fruitful life in Christ um, for whatever reason. And I want to encourage you to hold on with me. And today we're going to chat on how we can do that and um, how we can avoid falling short, how we can, can I say, bunker up and, and be established so as to push through. Because, hey, guess what? It's not easy. Hey, guess what? This life seems to be getting harder. Hey, guess what? Standing for Christ, uh, I can see in this current age, is, is pressing for much more uh, determination and commitment than before in our lives and so yeah it's not an easy road but it's most definitely a road we can complete and we can conquer and so I started asking the questions how can we avoid falling short how can we help one another to to finish this race strong and it led me to this next scripture and some of you might actually recognize this it says in Hebrews 12 verse 1 to 3 therefore 
since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down. Now, right there, I'm reading from the writer in Hebrews that we need to be deliberate in stripping off things that is weighing us down. And I know that if you are listening to this today, that right now I believe the Holy Spirit is telling you of things and elements that you know for a fact is actually weighing you down and you need to deal with it. So I want to just look at you right now and tell you it's time to deal with it. So he says, strip off every weight that slows you down, especially, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. That is the thing about sin. Sin separates us from God. Sin entangles us. It causes us to get stuck in the mud. It causes us to trip and fall and feel defeated and feel destroyed and and so many people stay down. But the key is to get back up again. And then he carries on and he says, let us run with endurance. Let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. Jesus. Why? Because he is the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting Jesus, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor besides God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. Why is that last sentence in there? Because the writer in Hebrews is saying this beautiful thing to you and to me. Jesus is not just telling us a pie in the sky thing that we need to do. He's saying, I've run the race. This is a team effort. Come on, brothers and sisters. Come on, my sons and daughters. You can do it. And I love it. I want to just say this again. He says, think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Have you been enduring some hostility from people in your life? I'm pretty sure you have. He says, then you won't become weary and give up. So, so we've heard this many times. I'm sure some of you are, are right now saying, yeah. Lee, we've heard that over and over. Run, run with endurance, stick it out, you can do it. <laughs> I've said it on so many occasions, but how do we do that? How, how can we practically put some things in place to reach the win, to, to reach the end line with great success? If, 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 I, if I read, I must keep my eyes on Jesus. How do I do that? Give me one or two um, guidelines of how I can do that practically. And so today, I just want to give you four tips. And I'm going to draw you a picture of what that looks like. But the first tip, and we're going to spend a little bit of time in the Word of God this morning. The first tip is, and bear with me here, surround yourself with winners. Guys, the people you surround yourself with will determine who you become because we as human beings are easily influenced and the people that you surround yourself with will either influence you in the good or will influence you in the bad. And when I say surround yourselves with winners, I'm not saying surround yourselves with people that uh, think they are above everybody else or who think they've made it and the rest still has to catch up. No, I'm speaking about surrounding yourself with men and women of character, with men and women that have got integrity, with men and women that are walking around with an upright heart. Guys, I want to tell you, if you surround yourselves with people like that, you are destined to see the finish line. But I want to read quickly with you in the book of Proverbs I'm going to read you a couple of scriptures just quickly, just to validate what I'm saying. And the first one is in Proverbs 13, verse 20. Just listen to this quickly. This is power. This is for me power. The Bible says, 
in verse uh, 13, verse 20, he who walks with wise men will be wise. What does that tell you? That you will be influenced by the people that you walk with. But the companion of fools will be destroyed. You know, I can actually stop right there. That's such a powerful scripture. It speaks so much into that. He says, he who walks with wise men will be wise, but, he, um, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. I want to go on. Uh, chapter 22. Listen to this. Chapter 22, verse 24. 22, 24. He says this. Make no friendship with an angry man. And with a furious man, do not go. Why? For you might learn his ways and set a snare for your soul. Take courage in that word today. Be careful who you are walking with in this time. I want to go a step further. Just read you one or two more scriptures um, in the same book of Proverbs chapter 27 Verse 6, I just love this one. Check this out. Um, one of my favorite scriptures, 27, 6, he says, Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. What does that mean? That's like, woo, that's, that's a language we don't speak today, is it? But what that means is that when you surround yourselves with men of character, honor, and integrity, and of an upright heart, these men will speak into your life. These men will say things to you that you need to hear. What not, not what you want to hear, what you need to hear. You see, people that you just surround yourself to, to tickle your ears or just to make you feel good will see you sinking in the mud and say, Ah, oh, don't worry, you will be okay. Because they're too afraid that they might offend you or hurt you when they speak the truth. I want to tell you that I would rather have somebody speak the truth into my life and know that I will survive than just having friends that foolishly walk with me, but we're both going nowhere. I want to read one last scripture in the, in the New Testament in Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, and this one's for me a very powerful one. 1 Corinthians 15. Just give me a moment. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. It's a scripture that we know well, but just listen to this. He says this, do not be deceived, for evil company corrupts good habits. Evil company corrupts good character. It is inevitable, it is inevitable that the people around you will influence you. So today I am saying to you, who is walking with you? Who are you walking with? Who are you exposing your life to? Is it winners? Is it champions? Is it men and women that are keeping their eyes on Jesus Christ? And so you can walk together. That is the first tip that I want to give you. The second tip is this. And this is slightly more challenging. You need to become and stay accountable. Now, we don't like that word accountability because, uh, you know, when you, when you came of age, when you turned 18, you're your own man, you're your own woman, you do your own thing, you live your own ways, you're accountable to no one. I want to say that accountability is a godly attribute. And accountability is a key that we all desperately need to make it in life. Um, the challenge with accountability is... It's great to have the heart to be accountable, but to really be accountable is not just when it's required from you. To be accountable, you need to take the step and, and be accountable. You see, it's like with, with somebody who has staff. It it's, can be really frustrating when you always, as a boss or as a manager, need to go and ask your staff to be accountable for something. But it means so much, and you can quickly see this is somebody with a heart of accountability when they come to you with matters and says, Sir or ma'am, I, I just want to tell you I've done my work. This is what it looks like. This is I messed up here and there. Not that you have to always find something and then who did this or how did this happen? And you get frustrated because that happens a lot. But what helps 
so much in our own lives if we can become but also stay accountable and that means that i'm walking with a heart that has decided to be accountable at all times not just when it's required from me and that leads me to to a scripture that i want to quickly read to you in the book of james it's a beautiful scripture in the new testament the book of james chapter 5 verses 16 listen to this he says confess your trespasses to one another wow when last have you confessed your sins to somebody and i'm not talking to, about to a, a buddy that just says yeah i feel the same <laughs> check this out he says confess your sins confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed for the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much what i read in that scripture is the incredible ability to be accountable not just when i'm caught out but i want to be accountable with my life and so i really want to encourage you to pick up on that and if you have not been accountable then maybe now is a good chance to start and who do i who am i accountable to be accountable to a leader to someone that you honor and respect as, as someone who's truly a, a person of character and integrity who won't just say ya broer muni warini alles is reg no but you will have a guy that's going to turn around and say thanks for being accountable but i need to help you and correct you in one or two things that's the kind of person you need to be accountable to if you want to just go well how do i gauge that you know when you feel you need to tell somebody something and it makes your heart pump you're like oh, i can't tell that person that's pretty much the right person to speak to <laughs> the third one the third key that i want to give you today is become vulnerable and teachable you know guys these are attributes that we've often been told to avoid in in our daily society be strong you're your own person just push over and move forward um, but you know what i've i've seen in the walk as a christian that when i'm stubborn and arrogant and i'll just do my way i've often seen those characteristics fail me it hasn't brought fruit in my life but i have seen that when i'm vulnerable and teachable that that just brings me straight back on the road and i get it right and i want to just read you a couple of scriptures just to to get that uh fixed in your heart today and i want to start back in the book of proverbs chapter 1 quickly um 1 verse 5 yes 1 verse 5 five says a wise man will hear and increase his learning isn't that beautiful and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel and those are crucial elements for us to remain teachable and vulnerable um and that previous scripture of James 5 verse 16 also falls in here. Let's look at Proverbs 15 verse 30, 31. The ear that hears the rebukes of life, very important scripture. The ears that hears the rebukes of life will abide amongst the wise. Will abide amongst the wise. He who disdains instruction despises his own soul guys let's not walk around thinking we so clever i think that until the day we die we will continue learning but that will only be determined whether i have a teachable heart or not he who disdains instruction despises his own soul but he who heeds rebuke gets understanding And then I want to read you one last one in Proverbs 18 verses 2. Uh check this out. This is quite a scripture that hit me beautifully. It says, "A fool has no delight in understanding, but delights in his own opinions." And I'm not going to lie to you, but I think so many of us love the B part of that scripture. We get the B part right. 
We delight in sharing our opinion. We've got no understanding about many matters and issues and things that are happening in, in, in people's lives or, or in situations. But, oh man, if we can just give our opinions, then our opinions are out there. And I come across that often, and I'm not going to lie to you, it's, it's quite a problem that people just walk around giving their own opinions. It's, it's not very encouraging really when people just whop out an opinion about something but they do not have understanding so be careful be careful with that one so i want to lead us to the fourth and final point um, and tip that will help us and it's this so let me just recap quickly we need to surround ourselves with winners we need to become and stay accountable um, we need to be vulnerable and teachable. And the last one, I think, is a crucial, crucial, crucial key. And it is we need to become an encourager. We need to become an encourager. And I want to read you a scripture with that in the book of Hebrews chapter 3. Guys, 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 what am I saying to you today? That it's not good enough that you just walk your own Christian life for yourself. There are people around you, behind you, in front of you. We need to encourage one another. When we ran that relay as small little choppies at school, you're running with this, this responsibilities in your hand and the crowds are shouting and screaming, go, go, go. It just makes you feel we, we can do this. We need to be encouragers in order to help one another reach the finish line. So check this out. Hebrews 3.13. I love the scripture, Hebrews 3, 13 and 14. But exhort one another daily, exhort one another daily while it is called today. When I read that, the word today popped out and hit me in the eyes. It means every day is today. We cannot just encourage people once in a while if we listen. Or if we're feeling shanana, no, we need to encourage people today. And when you wake up tomorrow, you need to encourage people today. Check it out. He says, exhort one another daily while it's called today. Here it is. Lest any one of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin is deceitful. And it hardens us. It blinds our eyes that we cannot see. Therefore, we need to exhort and encourage one another. The Bible says in the next verse, For we have become partakers of Christ. We've become partakers of Christ. If, and I stress the word, if, we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end not to the halfway line, not to the three-quarter line, not to the water point, not to the sick bay. No, he says, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the very end, we need to encourage one another. We need to encourage one another. Why do we need to encourage one another? Because encouragement leads to endurance. When I'm in my race, when I encourage other people, it stirs me to continue running well. If I just go on my own and I just watch people, then it makes it even hard for me. I'm not going to lie to you. But when I encourage people, it even stirs me to keep going strong. So I want to say that we desperately need this final step. We desperately need the final step in moving forward. And I'm sorry to say, but I do see a lot of Christians fail in the final step because we've got a lot of excuses. Uh, we can't do it. We're not qualified. We don't know what to say. And we've got all these amazing reasons. And I'm like going, oh, come on, guys. It's something that God put within us to encourage one another. So how does this process look? practically and I'm going to show you a picture here on the screen and I just want you to just follow with me just practically because I think it's always good to see things in person so you'll see the little the little guy that's you on your on your race right now okay and um, in the journey that you're on so the first one is we need to surround ourselves with winners 
We need to surround ourselves with men and women of character, integrity, with an upright heart. When you do that, it's beautiful. It's like a, a nice barrier of protection on our journey surrounding ourselves and secondly and i love i just closed my eyes and i saw this picture secondly we need to become and stay accountable and that when you're accountable you're actually drawing a line in the road you're drawing a line in the road and you're remaining straight and true in your journey thirdly is we need to be vulnerable and teachable what i love about vulnerability and teachability it's like the side lines of the road it shows you now where you can move and where you can um, act in your journey and, and it'll quickly show you where you need to go and be careful um, in your journey with Christ and with people. And then fourth and finally is we need to encourage people because in our journey we will come across people that have swayed from the road, that has struggled in their journey and it doesn't help we just walk past and say, Starta Omar, yeah, good luck, buddy. No, we need to encourage that person. And if I look at the image, what I love about it is the person on, on the right, as you come and you see this guy is, is, is taking strain there. Um, if you look at the word teachable, it's not just say your say to that person. That we often get wrong. Remember what he said, a fool delights in giving his own opinion without understanding. Having a teachable spirit will allow me to get into that person's world and it will allow me to learn their situation. When I learn someone's situation, I'm filled with compassion and the Holy Spirit will lead you how to encourage that person properly. Many people have even come around, around Alzheimer's in my life and tried to encourage us, but all they've really done is just given their own opinion. And I haven't really felt very encouraged. I've got someone's opinion over a situation, but not necessarily an encouragement when I'm when I'm teachable I learn I get into somebody's world and guess what I can now encourage that person on their level if you look at that second person that also needs encouragement on the left hand side of the road is to embrace your own vulnerability because guys it doesn't help we walk around telling people come 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 be encouraged come you just you can do this don't give up water 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 hey man come on that's the last thing we need to hear guys it's often a good thing to become vulnerable and, and share from your own life oh i've been going through some really tough stuff myself and tell your story and becoming vulnerable to that person makes that person go oh wow i'm not alone Oh wow, someone else has been through this. And through your vulnerability, you can guide that person back onto the road again. I hope that this picture helps you understand and also helps you just to see that it's very, very possible to get to the end and to reach the winning line. I want to say, I want to end off with this. The apostles did it. The apostles did it and they got it right. And you know what I read? If I read through scripture and through the stories of the apostles, they got all four of these points right. These oaks surrounded themselves with winners. They surrounded themselves with men of character, honor, integrity, and, and, a, and a, an upright heart. They were accountable all the time. They were vulnerable and teachable. And you can read that through scripture. But what I love about the stories of many of their lives is this. They would encourage, 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 encourage people around them all the time. And they themselves finished strong. So, you know what? A beautiful miracle about the lives of the apostles. They glowed to the very end. To the very end they glowed. But yes, the shocker. They're still glowing today. They're still glowing today. And you know why? Because they reached the finish line. How are they glowing? We read it in scripture. We share the stories. We, we pick it up in the testimonies of their lives that is spoken about even today. And I want to say this to you. You can have the same story. Guys, I want to say this to you. Don't let your life merely end being a memory. Let your life end by being a legacy. Let your life end by continuing to glow with, with stories and 
amazing encounters of how you stood through fires and, and difficult times and you served God no matter what. Be encouraged with that today. And, you know, I'm reminded of, of the scripture where Paul says these words in 2 Timothy 4 verse 7, and I'm finishing off with this. He says, I have fought the good fight. He says, I have finished the course. I have finished the race. And he ends off by saying this, I have kept the faith. I have kept the faith. That's my desire for my own life. That is my desire for you is to see you finish strong. Go for the win. And I encourage you with that today. I want to pray. And before I pray, I want to invite you, don't miss next week. Next week, we're going to be piecing this whole puzzle of the GLOW series together um, in, in one final beautiful picture. And we're going to worship now as well and just spend some time in the presence of the Lord with song. But I want to just encourage you guys, no matter where you are right now, no matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, take a deep breath, get up from the couch, get up from your bed, get up from the space where you are emotionally and set yourself the goal. What goal? To keep your eyes on Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of your faith. Don't put your eyes on a worldly system or a worldly government or a person to carry you through, or someone to save you on this planet, or your money to save you. No, keep your eyes on the author and the finisher of your faith. Father in heaven, as we come before you this morning, Lord, I want to just thank you for the power of your word. I want to thank you, Lord, for the power of your Holy Spirit in our lives. I want to thank you, Lord Jesus, that you did not just take part in the race of this life and the race of faith, but Lord Jesus, you completed it. You reached the finish line and you're spurring us on to do the same. I pray for my brothers and sisters, for every person watching right now, Lord God, would you quicken something in their hearts? Would you stir up a fire within each one of them right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, to finish this race strong. There's some, Lord God, that has fallen to the wayside. Some have dropped their faith. I pray today, Lord, that you would encourage them and give them the strength to pick up their faith again and stand boldly before you and say, I'm going to walk this road of serving my Lord Jesus Christ who died for me. And I pray that over every person in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.
Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. And the Lord is good to all, He has compassion and all that He has made. As far as the east is from the west, and that's how far He has removed our transgressions from us. As far as the east is from the west, that's how far He has removed our transgressions from us. that you have set before us, Father. And so I pray, Lord, just for a heart and spirit of endurance just to break forth in every single person right now in Jesus' name. Thank you that we don't have to be strong in our flesh. For in our weakness we are made strong because we rely on you. And I pray that for every person right now in the name of Jesus, to be made strong by you and you alone. In Jesus' name.